Hello everyone, I'm Monsignor Jamie and welcome to a new episode of Breaking Bread, where we bring together life's most important ingredients, family, faith, friends, and of course food. Today we're in New York City and we're here at the legendary Patsy's restaurant. My friend Sal is gonna cook up one of Frank Sinatra's most favorite dishes, veal milanese. We have a special guest with us, Charlie Romo. He's even known as the little Frank Sinatra of today. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Bread. And today we're in New York City at the famous Patsy's restaurant right here on West 56th Street. And today we're gonna go in and have one of Frank Sinatra's most famous dishes, veal milanese. And I have young Frank Sinatra with me, Charlie Romo. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Monty. You like this place? This is my favorite restaurant in Manhattan. Patsy's famous Italian. Like you said, was Frank Sinatra's favorite. Is Sal in here? He is, let's go inside. My name is Sal Scognamillo. I'm the third generation executive chef and owner of Patsy's Italian Restaurant. Monsignor Jamie, I look so forward to making my veal milanese for you. I hope you like it. Hey, Sal. Welcome, welcome How back. Are you? How are you doing? Good to see it's you. It's good to Pleasure. be back here. Thank you, thank you. Remember you remember Charlie Romo? Hey, are you, the best, Sal? The best. Good to see you, my man. I brought good. him along because, you know, the young Frank Sinatra. Uh, we got to do it, of course. And Bobby Darren, don't forget. Okay. Hey. Good stuff. And this is one of Frank Sinatra's favorite places. He used to come up here. Right. There's a private room in the back, which we'll show That's you later. That's named after him. That's named after him. We did it for our 75th anniversary right. a few years ago. And just such a wonderful history. And he really made us famous. You can't get a better PR person than Frank Sinatra. <laughs> what about your food? I think your food made you. We try, we try. Thank God. No, but Southern Italian. And what's interesting is, you know, my grandparents were both from Naples, and we've stayed very consistent. I even buy from some of the same suppliers that my grandfather wow. bought from, and the heart of the menu has always been the same. Now, is this the original location, or were you a couple of doors down? We were always located on West 56th Street in New York City. Right. For the first 10 years, it was right next door. There's a okay. Japanese restaurant, and in 1954, moved to this building, and it's our only location, which is okay. important. Okay, now your father and my grand grandfather. Father. Grandfather started it. My grandfather was Pasquale. When he went through Ellis Island, they called him Patsy. He thought it was like right. the American translation. Oh, okay. That's where the name came from. Him and my grandmother, Conchetta, started the restaurant. He was the first chef. My dad, he only worked here for 75 years, so he's good. And God bless, he's still with us. God bless. And I took over as the chef in January of 85. Wow, that's yeah, fantastic. So I'm only halfway there. Now, there's someone <laughs> else that came through it's Ellis Island. And I think they gave him the name Patsy as well. I think he opened up a pizzeria. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> nothing, nothing to do with us, though. That's okay. for sure. No, 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 no the Italian restaurant. That's us. Patsy's Italian restaurant. Right. And it's the Scognamillo family. Right. And we have four generations now. My wife is here and, my, and our son is joined full time Wonderful. As well. I met your wife, Lisa, downstairs. And Thank you. I know when I was here for the party, one of Frank Sinatra's party you had yes, here. Yes, of course. That was great. Now, his favorite dish. Well, he liked a lot of different things, but if there was one thing you had to pinpoint, it was the veal milanese. He was a simple guy. Scallopini, veal, very thin, flour, egg, seasoned breadcrumb. Now, I'm going to put some garlic in it today when I okay. show you, although he wouldn't like it that way. Okay. The, just the flavor of the garlic. No white wine or lemon. That's that, little, that, Well, different. lemon is on his side. Okay. But white wine, if you cook a uh, scallopini, could do it. But we just fry it in the pan. I think Frank Sinatra used to have a drink or two, right? Oh, yeah, once what in a while. Drink? <laughs> he made Patsy's Italian restaurant famous. He made Jack Daniels famous. They Jack were a Daniels. small company, and of course, it went through the roof. And I'm sure you know that sure. he was buried with some Jack Daniels and yes. stuff. And we were the first restaurant in New York City so proudly to serve the Frank Sinatra Jack Daniels, the one they did the special version for. Really? Yes, okay. we had a big party here. It was a lot of fun and a very big honor that they chose us. Now, he came from Hoboken. He did. Right across the river. Yeah, close okay. by. Yes. But uh, my grandfather met him, believe it or not, two years before he opened Patsy's. My grandfather had a restaurant called the Sorrento with a partner. And one of the customers that he had was Tommy Dorsey. Wow. And Tommy right. Dorsey says to Patsy, he said, I got this skinny kid from Hoboken. We need to fatten him up. <laughs> and that's how we met Frank Sinatra in 1942. Wow, and he's a legend. And hopefully he made this place a legend too by if coming you look, here. If you look at all the photos on the wall of all the different famous people, and we got to get yours. Okay. I don't know, you won't give it to oh, me. Right. Charlie, you can talk to someone. Come on, we can, come we can on. Make it I'm a little shy. Yourself. I don't like my pictures all over shy. the place. <laughs> 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 I didn't, I didn't hear that about you. All the photos on the wall, directly or indirectly, because he right. told them about it or he, they heard about it. And now some of the younger singers, right. like a Michael Bublé. And when I got to know him, he said, I said, how come you started coming? He said, well, good enough for Frank, good enough for me. Yeah. And another one that would surprise you is uh, P. Diddy. Really? Yeah. yeah, if you ever see the Ciroc Vodka commercials back in the day, 
There's the Sinatra-esque music playing. He's got the hat on. So. Well, speaking of Sinatra, you know, Charlie, have you ever heard him sing? He's unbelievable. He was just here at the Columbus Citizens Foundation. Columbus Citizens Foundation, Friars Club this past Friars week. Friars Club, yes. And even during the pandemic, Sal, I was at oh, your yes. pop-up uh, restaurant, Patsy's in Asbury Park. We did a pop-up restaurant oh, okay. during, the, during the pandemic. As Charlie mentioned, uh, you know, New York City was very tightly closed down. So right. we had to think outside the box, and my wife gave yes. full credit. We opened a temporary pop-up restaurant for 13 weekends in Asbury Park, New Jersey. It was Thursday through Sunday from February 2021 till May, and then we came back here in June 2021. Okay. Well, that's great. That's it's fantastic. Kind of well, it was very busy. You know what? You know what, Monsignor, was very important about that? Psychologically, it was great to see people in the dining room. Oh, yeah, room. I know. That was, was a terrible time. I know. It was the pandemic. tough. People need to be with each other. I think you know, so. And after the first week, you know, two, everyone, oh, we're home, no one's working, you know, it's great. But after the that, you know, wore off and you know, quickly, we yes. take that for granted. We took being with people for granted. And I think, uh, thank God, we're back and we realize how important life is. It's so important. You know, and no think man, of all no the people we lost, island. too. Oh, I mean, no, uh, that's, that's the we take each other for granted. And that's why, you know, Breaking Bread is all about bringing people together around that. the table. And that's what our show is all about family, faith, friends, and of course, food. You know, it's so funny. I always say, Patsy's Italian restaurant is famous for food, family, and Frank Sinatra. Oh, wow. So I have one up it. on you. You got one. Yeah, <laughs> if it was a poker game, you won. <laughs> oh, that's great. In a minute, we'll go in the kitchen. You'll prepare one of Frank Sinatra's favorite dishes. That'll okay. be my pleasure. Okay, great. Great, thank you. Don't go away. We'll be back, and Sal will prepare veal milanese, and maybe even Charlie will sing a, a tune from <laughs> Frank Sinatra. You never know. Sounds good. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Bread. We're here in the legendary Patsy's restaurant in the kitchen with Sal, our chef and so owner, and here. Charlie Romo. <laughs> Simple dish, Italian-American classic, veal milanese. And I also made some chicken. You could do it with uh, flounder, with codfish, right. pork scallopini. So milanese is, is the, the seasoning. Bread. Right, okay. So it's very simple. It's a flour, egg, and we do a seasoned breadcrumb. So you guys are going to help me season this breadcrumb. Just put a little bit of garlic. Now, Frank Sinatra wouldn't have the garlic, but we're going to eat oh, it, we're okay? Garlic. He would like just the flavor of it. About so a about, about, a, yeah, about a teaspoon of garlic. That's about a pound of uh, breadcrumbs, plain okay. breadcrumbs. Grated cheese. A little grated cheese. What kind of cheese do you Put This have? is Parmesan Reggiano. Oh, okay. Put like uh, two or three of those in there. All right. Oh, and then uh, four. Four is even better. Like, yeah, just a little bit of Charlie, yeah. help us out with salt yeah. and pepper. Now, not a lot of this salt, salt. and pepper. I know you don't this cook, I know you sing. <laughs> I usually leave the cooking half, to, half of that. to the professionals. Half yeah. of that, half of that. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. All right, let's let's do do it. It. Yeah. Right. Because you know the bread already has some seasoning. Right, right, so, and it's and salty. Bread crumb. And the cheese is salty. And too. oregano. Ah. Oregano. And a little bit of pepper. See, he knew. Just a touch of oregano, right? You know what oregano is, yeah. He knew the difference between the pepper and the oregano. He's getting better, he's learning. The kid's learning, right? Remember, a little pepper. And then. I put like about that much, about a half, a little more. I like pepper. He I likes like pepper. I so like pepper. Like now, if you I like, like spicy, you put the crushed red pepper. Right, yeah, of course. Too. And of course, we put some olive oil in there. Just okay. plain olive oil. Uh, just a, enough to wet it up a little about, bit. You know. And that was probably Let about, yeah, you can mix it for yeah, me. That was probably about a third of a cup. Oh, okay. uh, and that's a pound of breadcrumbs. And it's just enough okay. to moisten it. And you see how it all comes together right, right, right. as you mix it. Yes. You don't want it too wet. Otherwise, right. it won't adhere to the cutlets. It right. Smells good. Oh, it's smells yeah. good stuff. I'm telling you, simple but good. And that's what uh, Patsy's Italian Restaurant is about. This is the food you would cook in your home. Grandma and Grandpa always said that this kitchen was just a bigger kitchen than what they had when they grew up. Exactly. And these are their family that's right. out there. So and that's, that's so big. <laughs> it's a, it's a small one. It's a small one, which is okay, true. Okay, so what right? are we doing now? So now we've got the uh, veal cutlets. This is a veal scallopini. Right. We use the plume de veau, very thin, pounded paper thin. Right. And then we put just a little regular flour. breadcrumb. The uh, flowers, I'm sorry. And a lot of people say they season the flour, but I got the seasoning in here, so right. you don't have to do that. Yeah. I mean, if you want to, then the egg wash. Egg wash, okay. And you let all the egg drip out, right? Let it drip okay, out. Okay, like Charlie, you get your hands in there. Charlie, let's come do on, it. do what you got to do. All right. All right. Let's do it. Like this here. And just pat, put it with the back of your hand so it adheres to it. Yeah, Push yeah, it in. Right. Don't be You're afraid. making a hamburger there, Charlie. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> go easy. Go easy no, on it. How are we? Put it right perfect. down here. We'll put it with the other ones All we right. have. Okay, and one great. more. One more. And hit us up. And, you and took my is, job around. I'm the sorry, right, right. I missed it. I missed it. There. That's but okay. what's again? What's now the flour coats? I always say it creates like a wall between the, the grease and the oil exactly. and the cutlet. That's why people put flour, egg, and then breadcrumbs. It tenderizes right. too as well. A yeah. lot of times That's in great. the southern cooking, you do it the other way around. Okay. But now we got our olive oil heating up here. Okay. And we're gonna put these in there and we're gonna just fry them up. Okay. So you want yeah. that one at a time? We're gonna use our fingers? Uh, so why not? Okay. Listen. 
Okay, so here we go in there. This is now the, is that olive oil in that's there? That's regular olive oil. Okay. That's a piece of chicken. And this is the, the veal we just made. Oh, okay. And, you know, obviously, you know, it's don't overcrowd the pan because then instead of frying, they'll just boil. Okay. So make sure your temperature, we're frying it about 350 degrees. Okay, so you put a chicken cutlet in there that chicken you... Chicken cutlet we put in there, and I put, a little, I put a little parsley on that one. Okay. Little bit. And again, that's your own preference. You want to put some basil, some right. parsley, you can do as well. Now, how high of a flame do you cook this? I got this full flame just to get it hot, right. and the average frying temperature would be about 350 degrees. Right, okay. And it's about two minutes on each side till nice and brown. And if you overcrowd the pan, again, it would just makes the oil cooler and it's not going to fry the right way. You want to get it frying. Now some people, they double dip. They but do two coatings. Do you they can. Have? You can, of right. course you can. But then of course it would take away the way Sinatra liked it was that thin, yeah, right. thin cutlet. And so still make a lot of cut. bread, you know, but double dip makes it. Double dip, you, you make it go Let's not tell Charlie, you do it twice, <laughs> right, so it's right. a double coating. And you, make, and you make it go further, right? right you stretch right. it. My grandparents had a saying in Italian, you stretch the soup. Of course. A few so. more people came over, you had a couple of more things of water of inside, and you're good. There's <laughs> always great. enough food. I'm a single, a single coating. Oh, you're simple with that, right? Well, look at the size of him compared to He's too skinny, man. Yeah, come on. Listen, you know, you know what I say? Don't trust the thin chef, right? You yeah. know, that, so. Hey, watch it here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Oli Monsignor. Anyone else we can't talk That's about it, so. The cheese. Nice, How yeah. does Frank Sinatra not like garlic? You know, he liked garlic. Don't get right. me wrong, but it would repeat on him. So for him, with this recipe, what I would do right. is I'd saute some whole cloves of garlic in the olive oil, and I'd use that oil so it was just a flavor, so we wouldn't actually eat the garlic. In terms of pasta, he liked the, the tomato basil sauce. Now, we have two mother sauces at Patsy's Restaurant. There's marinara with garlic and right. tomato basil with onions. With onions, okay. And so many people say, oh, Italian food, you gotta have garlic and everything. Right. That's not the way my grandfather taught me. Right. Some people like it, and it's all, again, it comes down to preference. Now, did so. you learn a lot of recipes from your grandfather? I did. You know, I was very fortunate that my grandfather, he didn't pass until 86, so he saw me be the chef in 85. Uh, and the last time grandpa was here, and you're gonna love this story, is that he came here, and it was in the afternoon. We usually eat in the afternoon. The family gathers right. together. Well, that's how and they do it in Italy. The big <laughs> meals during the day. They and take a couple of hours. Family gets together. They break bread. Have and they go nap. back. And at night, you have a little, <laughs> a little uh, snack. A little snack. Which and for us is still a big meal. I know, but it's it's healthier. <laughs> so he would come, he would came here the last time. It was in '85, and he came in. And I greeted him at the door. I said, "Pa, welcome back." He didn't say hello to me. He walked past me, walked in the kitchen, went downstairs in the refrigerator, came back up. I said, Pop, where'd you go? He said, I want to make sure you're buying the same deal I told you to buy. So, you know, never forgot. Uh, we say in Italian, Uvecchia Guarda, the old guard. Keep in mind everything, okay. you know. So. Does your wife cook? She does, but mostly baking. Her mother is an excellent cook from Sicily, her mother. But she always says, Sal, I don't want to cook because I'll show you up. You know? so, <laughs> that's good. So How's that coming? Also, almost there. Yeah, just a little bit more. You now, the chicken would cook, uh, take a little bit longer than it's the It's a little bit thicker, so right. it takes a little bit longer. Really about the thickness. Right. And again, like a uh, beautiful piece of pork scallopini. Right. A uh, fish. I love fish milanese, like you right. know, codfish or, or right. flounder thick, you know, nice piece You know, of scallopini, fish. you know, a lot of people think they think of veal scallopini. Scallopini. scallopini is the way it's prepared. It's cut. It's thin cut, right, and yes. then it's breaded and fried. But, you know, a lot of people think scallopini is only veal, but it can be anything. It's Everything. Fish, fish scallopini. And the way we started off the veal now, instead of making it milanese, breaded, we just flour it, and then you, you want to saute. You can make a masala, right, right. picata, any style yeah, you want. Sure. So it's a simple way of cooking. My favorite is uh, veal uh, and a little uh, white wine. White wine, yeah, lemon, a little butter. butter. How yeah. about capers? Maybe capers? No. Yeah. A little bit. I don't <laughs> like capers. No capers for you? Okay. I only make what I like. Okay, so yeah. here we are. I've got some nice couple of pieces of veal, a nice piece of wow. chicken, and there you go. Wow, that looks good. Smells, Smells so good, good too, right? Delicious. delicious. <laughs> Simple and delicious. Well, I'm going to tell you a little something. Frank Sinatra, he was born in Hoboken, and when he died, they put the title of one of his songs on his tombstone. And many people think it's my way, but it's not. The best is yet to come, believe it or not. Yes. So don't go away. We're going to sit down in the restaurant, have a little veal milanese and a little chicken milanese. We'll talk a little bit more about this wonderful restaurant, and we're going to taste this food. Don't go away. The best is yet to come.
Welcome back to Breaking Bread. I told you that the best is yet to come. Here we are in Patsy's restaurant in the Frank Sinatra room eating wonderful pasta, veal milanese, Charlie Romo, I'm going to sing us a song or a line. <laughs> and so with happy. the owner's out, what, what can get better than it's this? It's all Nothing. good, but, you know, <laughs> we got Nothing. the wine, which is better, but you okay. know, also, I want to let you know, we, we brought some pasta out, because you got that pasta on the Italian table. All uh, right, let's see. And this. of course, we got the, <laughs> the sauce. We got the marinara and with the tomato so you basil sell the sauce, on there. Right? We okay. sell that on our website and gourmet stores all over. Wonderful. And when I did my first cookbook, Frank Sinatra's daughter wrote the forward. So it's really? all good stuff. Oh, wonderful. We have two cookbooks out. Oh, and that's it's a great. Great memory. Well, that's great. I have a cookbook coming out soon. Good luck. Wow. Oh, my God. I can't there wait to go. see it. And Lydia's doing the forward also. Very nice wow. forward. Wow. Excellent Let's stuff. Some pasta here. Wow. You know, wow. something's missing here. You know what's missing? The veal. And I've got some special guests to bring it out. Come Who's on. That? My son Joe and my oh. wife Lisa. Oh, look at that. Hey, Thank you. Long time no see. How are Thank you? you? Thank you. Lisa, how are you? Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for being here. here. Thank you, you very much. Now, you know, are you going to eat with us? Uh, I'm sorry, duty calls. We're on a tight ship. We gotta go back to work. Is the restaurant uh, full? <laughs> it's gonna be. It's someone's gotta do it, right? It's gonna be full, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got a little deal for you there. All right. Yeah, we got some real so some pasta. My God, there what go. service you got here? Good sir, we got a good server, that's for sure. Are you oh, this kidding? looks good. <laughs> Put some cheese, a little Sal, give me a dish. I'm Please. coming over. I'm coming over, buddy. Okay. All right. Now this sauce, I'm looking at that jar there, and I see a picture there. That's my grandparents. Wow, look my at that. My grandfather, Patsy, and my grandmother, Conchetta, and we always remember. Wow. It's all in their memory, and it's his and her yes. recipes. That's beautiful. Grandma and Grandpa. Oh, that's that's nice. wonderful that you remember them like I'm that. I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed to have a great family, and uh, thank God we're healthy, which is good. And of course, you know, the best part of all of this is to eat. Yes. So yes. have some of that. We got some vino here. Have a little cheese and uh, Absolutely. a little Parmesan pass around. Let's do it. Now, Charlie, tell me, uh, how did you get into singing, and how did you get interested in Frank Sinatra music. <sighs> All right, so obviously being born into an Italian-American family, here's the cheese for you. Thank you. That had a little something to do with it, no doubt, right? Okay. Listening to the music oh, of Frank Sinatra, thanks, Louis Prima, Vic Damone, uh, Dean Martin, all the guys in the Rat Pack. It's a part of my DNA and my upbringing. It was always playing uh, during Sunday Sunday uh, dinner. Yeah, there you go, beautiful. Thank you. And, um, you know, I just, since from a young kid, the music really touched me, and I took such a liking and interest in the era and the great interpreters of the American songbook, people like Sinatra, and I took it and ran with it. And luckily, I developed a voice to be able to sing and interpret that music myself. And as a young guy, I really do consider it a mission to carry the torch of Sinatra's music and the music of that timeless uh, era to the next generation. So it's really important to me. It's um, really wonderful. And I appreciate great. both of you guys yeah. supporting me, having you me at your events. Great voice, let me wonderful. tell you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate uh, it, guys. You know, it's so nice that music and food really make people happy. They oh, do. Yeah. And these two things are wonderful. Yeah. And of course, and our you faith. share it with family and friends. And our faith, <laughs> and our faith together as yes, well. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. I'll Cheers. That. Cheers. Salud. 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 As Frank Sinatra said, May you live to be 100 years old, and the last voice you hear will be mine. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> so let's try this food Let's here. do it. I'll try the pasta first. Mmm, that sauce is delicious. It is. Thank you. Now this is Very the nice. marinara sauce? The one on there is the tomato basil. Oh, okay. And that's with onions, and the marinara has the mm. garlic. Those are the two mother sauces. Delicious. I taste the onion in there. You can taste, right? Uh, I'm going to try the veal. Try the veal. Yeah. It's great. Let's see. Best in the city. Now, how often did Frank Sinatra eat this? Every time he came in, or did he vary? If he didn't say anything, this would be the meal I would prepare for him. Mm. If he wanted something different, he said, Sal, don't make that. I'm going to have this tonight. Right, 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 right. It's delicious, by the way. It's, Thank you. It's really unbelievable. Now, simple and good, right? Is it, is. it true that he used to come up the back staircase? Yes, he has separate <laughs> entrance. And he'd go right into this room, and he would go undetected. Right. He loved his fans, but you know, when he was here, he wanted to relax. Sure. And one of the things he really appreciated about the whole Scognamilla family was that we gave him his privacy. Right. There would be times the press would call and say, is sure. he there? And my father would say, who? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and now, he didn't often come alone, right, Sal? <laughs> no, he was always with a big group. And he had his friends. He brought the whole Rat Pack here. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Uh, big, another time, he threw a big party for James Cagney's 75th birthday. He took right. over the whole room. It was a lot wow. of fun. Wow. A lot of fun. And he would bring a lot of his friends, either acting friends or music mm -hmm. friends, Really good stuff, and it was so nice because then they would come back, and they would come back with their families. When we dedicated this, the Frank Sinatra room,
for our 75th anniversary a few years ago, Dean Martin's daughter was one of the people that dedicated the mm. sign. Dina. Dina. Wow. She's great. And uh, Tony Danza, who wow. of course yeah, sure. follows well, in the footsteps of Frank Sinatra. Sure. It's funny you <laughs> mentioned uh, James Cagney. When I worked at the uh, Carlisle Hotel, James Cagney used to come in there all the time. Oh he my was, God. He was old at the time, but it was great to Isn't that to something? Su and such but wonderful memories. But they always want their privacy, you know. And, uh, you have to respect that. I mean, this yeah. is a time when they're with their friends, their family, they want to relax yeah. and enjoy themselves. He loved to come here. He loved to kid around, you know, and he, he knew that he was safe yeah. here. Charlie, someday you'll experience that when you, yeah, have, absolutely. Uh, you have to keep people away from I you. I know. We're that working that on it. We're no working more, on it. No more photos. No more Charlie, photos. Right? Just keep the door open. Why don't you bust out a song? Uh, what do you want to hear? Let's see. Something. Whatever you like. Right now, we're filming this on a nice summer night. How about the summer wind? That's the summer wind came blowing in from across the sea. Hey, it lingered there to touch your hair. And walk with me. Not Beautiful. bad. Beautiful. Not bad, right? Any more than that, you might yeah. have to bring out another, <laughs> another entree. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But Charlie, you know, you'll be singing at a lot of venues for the church. For Thank you. The Diocese of Brooklyn, Futures in Education. You've been performing for us. You're always there Christmas time and Absolutely. all of our benefits. He's, and I'll call him up. Charlie, I need you to sing a song. I need you to sing. And he's always there. He's always no. willing to help it's out. Happy stuff. to do it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you always for having me. And, when you really become like Frank Sinatra, don't forget us. <laughs> never, <laughs> never. No, this is Patsy's is home, the diocese is home. So happy to be sitting at a table with the both of you. We Thank feel you for that supporting way, yeah. my my music. Thank you for looking at me as somebody who is capable of taking, you know, Sinatra's legacy and, and carrying wonderful. it on. Doing the same thing that you do. Thank you guys. It's I appreciate great, it. especially the young generation should know about that. Hundred yes, percent. That's great. So, that's the mission. I tell you, uh, Sal, this was a great day. I mean, I had uh, a wonderful time. I'm so happy. It was great being here, seeing one of Frank Sinatra's favorite meals, listening to Charlie sing, talking about the old times, and there's not too many restaurants like this. We're very it blessed. It kind of brings Lo back the past. Lovely memories you know, and, and family that keeps us together. It's the family that we surround ourselves with at the table, and in song and in prayer. Right. Uh, that's great. That's wonderful. And I wish you and your family many more years. Thank you. You know, another 75 years, Thank plus you. years. Your son and your grandchildren will take it over. And as long as they want to do it, I'm happy. The tradition will continue. Thank you. Thank so, you, Monsignor. I want to thank you all for tuning in today here at Patsy's Restaurant. And you know, as today, we remembered in a very special way Frank Sinatra, and we talked about his singing. We talked about what he liked to eat. And we felt that he was here with us. And I think that's so true with breaking bread together with your family. You know, whenever we eat a recipe from grandma or we talk about daddy or someone that has passed on, they become present with us. They're here with us. We're connected with them. And that's what, you know, breaking bread is all about. You know, bringing together family, friends, faith, and of course, food. And that's what this show is all about. So the next time you sit down with a meal with your family, remember a loved one and they'll be right there with you. See you next time on Breaking Bread. Thank you.